G'day, how you going? Just going to share some more news. Australian government announces a $61 million boost to tackle violent extremism. The Morrison government has pledged $16.17 million boost to counter violent extremism and glowing alarm over surging numbers of the anti-government conspiracy theorists. 3rd of February 2022, Home Affairs Minister Kate Andrews, tens of millions of dollars announced to combat conspiracy theories, $60 million boost. Federal government will spend more than $60 million to combat violent extremism, targeting the rapid rise in conspiracy theories during the and fears for MP safety's Home Minister's Affairs Karen Andrews announced the funding boost on Wednesday amid concerns of the rise of misinformation and hate. Andrews said the government had zero tolerance for anyone threatening the peace and cohesion of our society by trying to use violence to achieve political, religious or ideological goal. Australia is a peaceful, tolerant and humaneous country. We cannot be blind to the fact that those there are those among us who seek to sow hate, fear and discord, he said. Violent extremists may have had a range of ideologies and motives, but none of them are welcome in this country. Federal government is pledging an additional $61.7 million towards programs counting violent extremism, which has seen funding double since 2013. This will include $24.5 million to expand intervention programs into rural and regional areas and $13.8 million towards the national program to rehabilitate and regenerate violent extremists in custody. So are they going to put these people into these... Um, Camps that they're building? Is that what that's for? I want to quickly show you guys something, right? Alright, I'm going to show you these things, ready? These are the quarantine buildings. And these are the each rooms. Now, see these wires? This is a window. Why do you think they got the wire in the window? It hooks up because they've got a massive roller shell that keeps you in. This electronic door, which will make it lock, turn the air conditioner off or on. There's that much gadgets, these buildings, or is it 900,000, or, or 90, yeah, 900,000 each building. And that's a lot to make. Like, you could build a lot of houses for that. You could probably build three houses for that price. It's just ridiculous, the amount it's costing. It's going to be all lined in here. I bet they got microphones and a few hidden cameras in there to listen to you as well. The windows are double glazed, so you won't be able to punch out of it. So is it hermetically sealed? It's solid. Each room. This is where you'll be sleeping. Toilet, bathroom, kitchen, TV. They're going to have double beds. There'll be two people per room. And it's a little prison, the size of a little Roman building. Not, don't these people building them think that they won't be locked up in them too? This is the thing. The Polish thought that when they were building their camps over there, they didn't think they would end up in them. All these buildings is connected a gas pipe that is connected to nothing. Right here. Is it a gas pipe or a water pipe? The rest of the building, the air conditioning, the hot water, electrical and that. What's this for? So yeah, that's what's to come, I think. So, security agencies say they are concerned that it has supercharged the number of minded groups and individuals. An analyst is Professor Greg Martin from the Deakin University welcomed the funding commitment, describing the focus on rehabilitation and prevention as exactly what we want. It's important that we are seeing an increasing from the government that the far-right extremists in its various forms, including these conspiracy theories in a rising problem, he told SBS News. Here we go again. The same old link, linking or right ideologies with conspiracy theories. Firstly, conspiracy theories were once considered to be on the left 15 years ago. This website was once called a leftist conspiracy loony bin by one commentator. This, is, this was black and white when the left was protesting against Masado, parking partaking in the Occupy movement, standing up for civil liberties and much more. Those of us who see a bigger picture are often classified with any side that threatens the upset, the status quo. Back then it was the left who generally sought to challenge the establishment, but before being co-opted, the cultural Marxist elements becoming the dominant doctrine over social revolutionary ideology. The right, George Bush and the neoliberal order was the same old pony in the game. Conservative supporters of this regime dismissed the conspiracy culture back then. Those who were simply warning that an international control structure was emerging, the likes had never been seen before. You believed 
you crazy lefty, go hug some more trees. Fast forward a decade and conservatives seem to be finally beginning to understand this threat to their protected way of life with the group original group hoping to disrupt this order was misled and weaponized. These are the facts. Furthermore, they fail to mention that any understand the false left-right paradigm is in fact a hoax. We never subscribe to the political theatre that underpins the manufactured social division. There is only truth and lies, good and evil. Perhaps we will always be classified whichever side is in pursuit of the best interests of for Australian at any given moment in time, Miss Andrews. Leave us out your dribble. Professor Barton also pointed to an activity from protests outside Parliament House and the National Press Club in the recent days, which included genuine far-right extremists. As an example to the potential threat, we are seeing that at the moment, in the midst of it, there are some really hardcore elements, he said. The threat always is that some individual will decide, perhaps, with no one else knowing anything about it, to make them make a hero of themselves. 60 million of your taxpayer dollars once again going to protect you. Violent extremism. The funding boost we see, $8 million go towards countering violent extremism in research, risk assessment and training, whatever that means. Spying, more wasted money and file, false bureaucracy. So, <clears throat> that training and funding, that would that would be um, the buildings and, and housing people in these buildings, training security guards. So we also see 10.7 million. Oh, that's we also see 10.7 million invested into community grants program and 4.7 million into communication programs that rebuke extremist natures. In the extremist narrative, the lockdown of healthy people for two years over mould. It's just sad that I have to bloody censor myself because if I don't censor myself, they'll just strike this down. Professor Barton said the intervention programs were not the sole answer but could play a role in helping people who have gone off to an extreme find there is an off-ramp and a pathway out. We can't manufacture that out of thin air and the government grant program can't manufacture that, but we can certainly help them to be more efficient and people become more aware, he said. So that can be a catalyst that they make all the difference. Labor Home Affairs spokesman Katrina, Katrina, Christina Keneally described the response as too little, too late by the Morrison government. Funding the counter threat of extremists is always welcome, but it's truly addressed the threat. And Mr. Morrison must listen to our intelligence and security agencies' warnings and addressings what's driving what really is driving this, she said. Instead, he has stood back as MPs like Craig Kelly, George Christensen, Matt Carvin, Jeanette Derrick Rennick, and have endorsed the far right. What could all of this continued propaganda be leading towards? <clears throat> False flake imminent. Yeah, and I've just got a feeling uh, either Canberra or Sydney, and I dare say to be Canberra, uh, is going to have a big false flag. So if you're there in those crowds, I wouldn't be there myself, but if you're there, be very, very careful. Might be someone in a truck trying to run someone down or something. I hope it doesn't happen, but just be careful. The response following warnings from national security agencies about the threat posed by the single issue violent extremists such as recent lockdown protests. ASIO Director General Mike Berger said last October many violent extremists were focusing on individual issues rather than a broad ideology such as right wing extremism. The most likely attack in Australia will be that of a lone actor, one who mobilises to violence with little or no warning, Mr Burgess said at the time. It's a very interesting time here in Canberra. Dr TJ Coles explored in his December feature piece below, the possibility of a false flag attacks could soon be on the horizon, used as a means to squash anti-injection sentiment in this country. Uh, I, I just feel something's coming. With recent counter-terrorism operations during Melbourne lockdown protests, we also are seeing the growing opposition to continuation of perpetual the ingredients seem to fit so. This has followed the continuous build-up of several arsenal against anyone who dares to question the system. These are new. The Australian establishment is no stranger in orchestrating attacks in this country, including the most notable at Port Arthur in 1996, and even a recent lone wolf production such as the Sydney Siege. Uh, also, Burke Street in Melbourne, I believe that was them. What do you think this could all mean? Is the establishment gearing up for another episode, Problem, Reaction, Solution? Yeah. Thanks for watching. Bye.